Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome again to our St. James Sunday morning service where um, we, we join together with saints around the world and especially the members of our own congregation here at the corner of Hamilton and Cavalier in Winnipeg as we, well, pay attention to the words of our gospel reading for today. And today we hear from John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. As we begin, I'd like to invite all of you um, that have everyone on our email list, you've received um, the bulletin insert. Let's pull that up and we'll join with the words of the intro text, which again, begin with that John 10 verse, but then go into the 23rd Psalm. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. I lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading for today again really bridges that gap from the 23rd Psalm into the New Testament and its fulfillment with Jesus as the one as, who is and did come as that good shepherd. And so we hear from John chapter 10, these verses, where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay, lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, sitting here by our Good Shepherd window at St. James, right by our baptismal font, where we are all called and claimed and washed in the waters of Christ's name in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, so that we're clothed in him and we are made, well, sheep of that sheepfold. <clears throat> it's a wonderful question to ponder and look at the image and ask ourselves, what is it that you think of him? You know, there's so many different ideas that are out there, and sometimes in the busyness of our lives and the way in which we get so caught up chasing after all of the worries of our, well, work schedules, our school schedules, and whatever else might be there crowding for our attention, that you know, our faith goes into the back burner. And, you know, we say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, Jesus is always there. Our Lord is always there. That's part of that teaching, that there's no place that we can run where we are ever away from, you know, the presence of the Lord. But as we get caught up with so many different worries in our lives, it's very easy for us to really forget. So today is one of those questions to, well, look at the image, reflect on it through the waters of our baptism, now and ask again the question, what is it that we think of this fellow? So often, as I mentioned, or having grown up within the Lutheran Church, and perhaps some of you are perhaps new to the Lutheran Church, new to the Christian faith, 
You know, there's so many new things and new facets that we discover along the way, but, you know, as we hear these words, we're really drawn back to, as we said before, the 23rd Psalm and in the way in which not only Jesus ties that together with his own identity where not only the Lord is my shepherd and the word underneath in the Hebrew is not just Lord in a general sense, it's Yahweh, you know, the name of God itself. And here, the way that Jesus uses that, he says, yes, I'm God here. I am the good shepherd, the one that was talked about way back when. It's a wonderful association, one that we so easily overlook. But what we discover along the way, and especially in our world where well, within some of our churches, we get so caught up in terms of a thinking faith, as long as I know the right stuff, or I've heard the stories, or whatever it might be, that we think that we've got faith because I have the bits and pieces of information. What we discover along the way is, is that in our spiritual life, the way that Jesus describes it here, and the way it was described in the 23rd Psalm, is really one of a relationship between our God and his people. And it's a relationship built, well, in care. In care that involves, yes, sometimes a little bit of discipline along the way. So in the same way that the shepherd has to go and, well, gather the sheep, and sometimes he needs to use the stick in order to guide and direct them in the way that they need to go. He does that not in order to harm them, though, but in order to care for them. But then, also and especially as we hear these words, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, or the way that we hear in the other Gospels where Jesus uses that whole image of him being the shepherd and he goes out and finds the one that's wandered from the flock and brings it back on his shoulder, sort of like what we have reflected here where Jesus cares for that one sheep that he goes to find. It's this realization that, you know, as our Lord came on earth in our humanity, and then as he died on the cross and rose again from the dead, he did that in order to be able to look us in the face, to build that relationship, not merely as a matter of something just floating in our heads, but one where he calls us to himself. We do that, we gather together, and that's why the church is a family. It's referred to as a family. Peter talks about it as a family, and we need to be reminded about that, that you know, even within this sheepfold of the church, we have our place and that relationship with our Lord is what gathers us together. It's a relationship of care. And granted, you know, sheep, when they're in the pasture together, sometimes they bully each other. I know that. Should it happen? No, but the reality is that it does. And that's part of the whole image that Jesus is using here and the scriptures make use of as well, that you know, when we take a look only at ourselves, sometimes we can very easily find fault with one another. And that's the way that our society is moving right now, where, you know, you find fault and then you tear people down, and then all in order to bolster yourself and build yourself up. Well, you know, that's a fact of life. And that's what Scripture talks about, how everyone has stumbled and falls in sin. We carry it around with us as an existential problem, not just a moral one. And no matter how hard we try to point at other people's faults, we're still carrying our own faults. The beautiful thing of this passage is, is that we're reminded that God not only loves and cares for us, even with our own faults, but he does that in a way to guide and to direct us, to care for us, to nurture us, to feed us, and yes, again, that Easter message where Jesus, the Good Shepherd, God in the flesh, comes in order to lay down his life, all in order to care for us so that we can be his own, not only here in time, but also there in eternity. So that as we hear the call of our Lord coming to us through the word, Really, the Holy Spirit prompts us and invites us to listen. To listen and realize that this Jesus that is talked about in the historical records, that is presented to us in the scriptures, this Jesus came in order to be not only our good shepherd, but to call as many as will hear his voice. 
I had a wonderful meme that circulated around on Facebook, and it's very true. And it's a tough one for us in our day and age. Not that it wasn't for other generations as well, but the comment was, is you don't have to give up your intellect in order to read the scriptures. You have to give up your pride. And there's a lot of profound wisdom in that. As we listen for the voice of that good shepherd of our Savior, because in the midst of all of it, you know, you take a look in history, you take a look at the, the consistency of the scriptures from Old Testament to New Testament, and even within the Testaments, you know, it's all there. It's all there. What so often stands in the way is our own stubbornness, saying, I don't want to believe that. I can't believe that. Or, I don't appreciate in the way in which the scriptures criticize my own brokenness. You know what? That's part of growth. And to recognize that we're broken. You know, that's part of that call of repentance to stand before the Lord in humility. He does see us through and through. But in the midst of that, there's that good news that this Jesus who died, who laid down his life for us, he laid it down of his own accord. He laid it down for you and for me. He did that not in order to crush us in our sinfulness, our brokenness, our own mistakenness, but specifically to do what we can't do in order to give his life for our forgiveness so that through baptism we can be covered over in his own righteousness and find our rest and our refuge in him. So today, as we reflect on Jesus as that good shepherd, that 23rd Psalm, God in the flesh, who has come in order to gather his people to himself. Let's keep that image in mind. Let's use it to meditate on over the week so that as we you know, reflect on how we too are the sheep that he's come in order to save, that he laid his down life, his life for you. And for this, we can certainly give thanks. It's all part of our Easter celebration. So we say Christ is risen, and we say he is risen indeed. Alleluia. I can hear a few of the younger kids and some of the younger young adults shouting that alleluia just as we, we reflect upon it and as we hear it in church, even as we have that exchange. But let's give thanks to our God, and let's rejoice in that gift. Amen. Let's join in our prayers. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have not only fulfilled your word in so many manifold and manifest ways, but even that 23rd Psalm from the Old Testament, as we see it fulfilled in the person of your Son, who came in order to be the one that lays down his life for us, in order to save us, to redeem us, to buy us back, not only from that wolf, the devil, who comes in order to try and snatch us away, but then to give us that healing oil of your Holy Spirit. Bless us so that as we hear your word and that we would learn to listen, that our ears would be open so that not only we would learn to react with the stubbornness of our own pridefulness and our hearts, but instead to be able to rejoice specifically in that gift where you come to guide us, to lead us, to nurture us, and to lead us to those green pastures time and time again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are wrestling with illness of any kind and those who are recovering from surgeries, those within our congregation and those who are connected to our congregation as well who are recovering from COVID symptoms. We give thanks to you for each day and each step of progress. At the same time, continue to guide not only your children, your church, but also all the nations of the world, even when they don't recognize your hand in the midst of it, so that we would learn to be responsible as we relate to one another during this, this pandemic season. Guide us, though, not to be frightened by all of the events of the world as though these things are the eternal word for our lives here today, but instead open our ears, especially your children, to hear your leading and your calling and your guiding as you speak to us through your Son. Grant us that peace as you bring us to those still waters, even now, through your word and here in the sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Continue to be with all those who have authority over us and those in positions of leadership so that they would be guided by wisdom as they respond to the many challenges. Curb the tendency among all of our humanity to grumble about things that are well, we don't consider to be right, even though we only have the smallest grasp on what is needful right now. But instead, curb and turn the hearts of all the people in this world so that in the midst of our own brokenness, we would recognize our, our limitations so that we would be able to be drawn back to you. Bless your church throughout the world so that through the preaching of your word and the true preaching of your word is gospel words. Law and gospel, yes, in order to teach and guide us back to you. That we would learn to stand before you in humility, and before one another in the same humility, so that we learn to forgive one another, even as you have forgiven us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers and all the other petitions of our hearts, Lord, though, we bring them before you, trusting in your mercy all through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Good Shepherd, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Uh, for today, we're going to try a new hymn, or at least one that we haven't sung too often at St. James, a good old standard for Good Shepherd Sunday, and then, yes, another good old children's hymn, Jesus Loves Me at the End. But for our first one, the new one, let's turn to our hymn 462. Um, forgive me if I crack or if I make mistakes along the way, but at the same time, it's good to try and sing a new song along the way here too. 462. All the earth with joy is sounding. And so those of you with your hymnals at home, Lutheran service book, let's join in turning to that hymn. We'll sing all four verses. Life and labor 
Good Shepherd theme. Let's turn to hymn 710 in our hymnals. 710, and again, we'll sing all of the verses. Hang on, let me get there to make sure I've got the right Good Shepherd's hymn in our minds. 710, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. 710. <laughs> to Shirley for playing with us today and Pastor Oboya for singing in the background with us as well. For our last hymn, as I said, we'll turn to 588 if you need it in the hymnals, although most of us really won't. But 588, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, 
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, our good shepherd, look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.